next on at 11.36 p.m. Central Time tonight, 10.36 a.m. Kazakhstan time Sunday morning at a uh, site about 92 miles southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. The weather forecast for landing for the returning crew calls for clear skies on that Sunday morning, temperatures in the low 40s. We'll discuss their undocking and entry timeline in detail in a moment. Good afternoon from Mission Control Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room. It is homecoming day for Russian cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky of Roscosmos, the Soyuz commander, Russian actress Yulia Parasild, and her producer-director, Klim Shapenko. Parasild and Shapenko spent almost two weeks on the station filming scenes for a movie titled Challenge, in which she portrays a surgeon launched to the station to attend to an ailing crew member who was portrayed by Novitsky. The movie-making venture was arranged between Roscosmos and Moscow-based media entities. Just a few minutes from now, Parasild and Shapenko will bid farewell to the Expedition 65 crew members with whom they spent the last 12 days on the station, and they will climb aboard their Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft to be assisted by Novitsky in suiting up in their Russia, Russian Sokol launch and entry suits for the ride back to Earth. Novitsky will join them aboard the Soyuz a short time later and will close the hatch to the vehicle around 4.45 p.m. Central Time. We will not be on the air for the hatch closure itself. We will replay that activity, however, this evening as part of our Soyuz undocking coverage. About an hour and a half ago, the Soyuz uh, was activated by Novitsky. Its systems are up and running ready uh, to come off of internal, uh, uh, coming, o coming off of space station power sources and going to internal power for the remainder of its undocking and uh, powered flight away from the station and then ultimately the deorbit burn later this evening that will uh, begin the trip back into the Earth's atmosphere with the Soyuz headed for its landing in central Kazakhstan. Parasild and Shapenko launched on a different vehicle, the Soyuz MS-19, back on October 5th from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with another veteran cosmonaut, Anton Shkaplerov. They launched on a fast track, two orbit, three hour trajectory, docking to the Rosviet module on the Earth facing side of the Russian segment of the station. Shkaplerov will remain aboard the space station for the next five months returning in the MS-19 craft with NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei and Russian cosmonaut Pyotr Dubrov in late March. Novitsky returns to Earth tonight, having logged 191 days in space on a mission spanning 3,056 orbits of the Earth and 80.9 million miles. When he lands, Novitsky will have chalked up 531 days in space on his three missions. For the spaceflight participants, Parasild and Shapenko traveled 5.1 million miles spanning 192 orbits of the Earth during their 12 days away from the planet. This, by the way, is the first time a Soyuz will have returned to Earth without a U.S. crew member on board since September 12, 2015, when Russian cosmonaut Gennady Padalka, European Space Agency astronaut Andy Mogensen, and Kazakh cosmonaut Aydin Aimbatov landed in their Soyuz TMA-16M spacecraft. Today's undocking and landing comes uh, in the wake of an activity yesterday in which Russian flight controllers uh, conducted a scheduled thruster firing test on this Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft. However, the thruster firing uh, unexpectedly continued after the end of the test window, resulting in a temporary loss of orientation control for the International Space Station. Within 30 minutes, flight controllers regained control of the space station Obviously now in a stable configuration, the crew is never in any danger. Flight controllers continuing to evaluate data on that brief attitude excursion due to the thruster firing. NASA and Roscosmos collaborating to understand the root cause. 
but the Soyuz uh, is in good shape, was declared ready to support undocking and landing uh, this evening, and everything is in order for uh, the departure of Novitsky, Parasild, and Shepenko. At the time of undocking uh, this evening, which is scheduled for 8.14 p.m. Central Time, 9.14 p.m. Eastern Time, that will mark uh, the official end of Expedition 65 and the beginning of Expedition 66 under the command of uh, European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Pesquet. Expedition 66 in this crew portrait actually uh, shows uh, what uh, will be the crew configuration after the departure of the crew two crew, Pesquet, Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, and Aki Hoshide. Uh, from left to right in this Expedition 66 uh, crew portrait uh, shows the oncoming crew three crew members who are scheduled to launch uh, October 30th from the Kennedy Space Center, Rasha Chari, Tom Marshburn, Matthias Maurer of the European Space Agency, Anton Shkaplerov, who will take over command of the station from Pesquet uh, just a few hours before the crew, two crew departs. Also, Piotr Dubrov, Caleb Barron of NASA, and Mark Vandehei on the far right. Vandehei and Dubrov headed for 355 days in space before they return home in late March with Shkaplerov. At this hour, the International Space Station is flying uh, 258 miles above the Earth, moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator over the Pacific Ocean, coming into uh, an orbital sunrise over the vehicle. A good view there of the uh, Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft, uh, which is the uh, ride home for Novitsky, Parasild, and Shapenko today. Uh, this uh, vehicle relocated uh, a couple of weeks ago from uh, one docking port to Naoka to open up uh, the Naoka, uh, the uh, Rosviet uh, module uh, for the arrival of the Soyuz MS-19 that brought uh, Shkaplerov, Para Parasild, and Shapenko up to the International Space Station. Naoka, of course, the newest uh, and one of the largest modules on the International Space Station arrived in late July following its launch from Baikonur on a Proton-M rocket. Just a few minutes from now, uh, we'll be expecting uh, to come inside the International Space Station at the vestibule connecting Naoka to the uh, Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft for farewells. Uh, between uh, the crew members, and again, as we mentioned earlier, Parasild and Shapenko will be first to board the Soyuz to begin the process of suiting up in their Sokol launch and entry suits, assisted by uh, Novitsky, who will join them a bit later, uh, prior to the closing of the hatch to the Soyuz itself. The uh, timeline uh, for tonight's activities calls for uh, the undocking command to be issued at 8.12 and 30 seconds p.m. Central Time to initiate the opening of the hooks holding uh, the Soyuz spacecraft uh, to the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. It'll take about 90 seconds for those hooks to open, at which point uh, springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off against one another and physical separation will occur. The undocking itself at 8.14 Central Time, 9.14 p.m. Eastern Time. There will be two separation burns executed uh, by the Soyuz onboard computers to begin an opening raid away from the International Space Station to a safe distance away from the complex for the uh, later uh, deorbit burn this evening that will occur at 10.41 p.m. 
Central Time, 1141 p.m. Eastern Time. That will be a four minute, 39 second retrograde firing of the Soyuz engine to slow the vehicle down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit to begin its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. About uh, 29 minutes after the deorbit burn, the uh, pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz will occur as the top portion that is docked to the uh, Naoka docking port, that is the orbital module, and the rear section to which you see the solar arrays, that's the instrumentation and propulsion module, they will separate from the center section, which is the descent module, in which the crew will be strapped in with uh, Novitsky in the center seat as Soyuz commander. To his left will be Shapenko as board engineer number one, and to his right, Yulia Peresild, the Russian actress, who is serving tonight as board engineer number two. The descent module is the only section of the Soyuz that survives re-entry. It's heat shield repelling uh, temperatures that will build up to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit uh, during uh, the fiery re-entry back into the Earth's atmosphere uh, before uh, the parachute uh, deployment sequence begins closer to the landing site. The parachutes will be uh, commanded to open at uh, 11, 21, and 20 eight seconds p.m. Central Time, 11.21 and 28 seconds p.m. Central Time. And from that point on, it takes about 15 minutes under the chutes for the Soyuz to descend for its landing under the chutes with landing scheduled at around 11.36 p.m. Central Time. In Kazakhstan, the Rosaviatsa Russian Search and Recovery Forces are uh, in the uh, early morning hours uh, of Sunday morning, uh, where they are uh, in Karaganda, the staging city for tonight's uh, landing operations, as has been the case for almost all of the Soyuz landings we have brought you over the course of these years. And uh, there are helicopters, uh, both in Karaganda and in Jezkazgan, uh, that uh, will be airborne at the time of the deorbit burn in sequential fashion to move toward the landing site to begin the recovery of the crew just minutes after the touchdown of the Soyuz. Again, the landing scheduled uh, just before 11.36 p.m. Central Time tonight at a site 92 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. After the Soyuz touches down, uh, the search and recovery forces will make their way to the spacecraft and begin the process of extracting the crew with Novitsky coming out of the descent module first from the center seat of the Soyuz, followed uh, by Shapenko and Parasild. They will have a few minutes uh, in uh, those uh, familiar chairs nearby the uh, capsule uh, to get their land legs back. Novitsky after 191 days in space, Parasild and Shapenko after 12 days in space. They'll be uh, brought uh, to a nearby medical tent to get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable clothing, and then ultimately will be flown by Russian Mi-8 helicopters to Karaganda, Kazakhstan, where a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft will be standing by to uh, take them back to uh, their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. This MS-18 vehicle was the uh, spacecraft that brought Novitsky, Vandehei, and Dubrov to the International Space Station back on April 9th, returning home tonight after 191 days and a relocation from one docking port to another. And again, the undocking itself, the command uh, for undocking scheduled about four hours and 42 minutes from now with physical separation expected about four hours and 44 minutes from now with the undocking, the physical separation planned for 8.14 p.m. Central Time, 9.14 p.m. Eastern Time.
It is a, a busy time of uh, vehicle movements at the International Space Station. Coming up next week, the unpiloted ISS Progress 78 cargo craft that is currently docked uh, to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station will undock itself at uh, 6.42 p.m. Uh, Central Time on Wednesday evening. It will uh, fly off to a distance uh, of about 100 or so miles away from the station and then will reapproach the station for a redocking on Thursday evening. That redocking uh, to take place uh, to this same port that the uh, Soyuz is currently linked up to, the uh, Naoka module. The uh, undock and redock or relocation, if you will, this whole procedure is designed to put the Progress 78 cargo craft at Naoka to perform propellant leak checks of the uh, Naoka fuel system prior to the time that Naoka is used for orientation control of the International Space Station in the future. So this undock and redock activity for the ISS Progress 78 cargo craft begins next Wednesday. Uh, there won't be any coverage of the undocking However, we will be on the air Thursday to provide coverage of the rendezvous and redocking of the Progress 78 to the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. As uh, mentioned earlier, we're just uh, a few minutes away from uh, receiving downlink television inside the uh, passageway that connects uh, Naoka to the Soyuz MS-18. That uh, will enable us uh, to uh, listen in and watch uh, farewells that will take place between the departing crew members, Novitsky, Parasild, and Shepenko, as they uh, say goodbye to their Expedition 65 colleagues with whom uh, Parasild and Shepenko have spent uh, the last 12 days with. Novitsky, of course, uh, wrapping up six and a half months on board the International Space Station. And as we mentioned, after he lands uh, later tonight or Sunday morning Kazakhstan time, he will have uh, chalked up 531 days in space on his three space flights. Mission control at the space to ground two. And now we are inside uh, that passageway to the International Space Station's uh, Naoka module. Klim Shapenko uh, on the right, Yulia Parasild in the red uh, jumpsuit, Pyotr Dubrov on the left. MCC Moscow SS on space to round one, go ahead. Uh, Sergey, right now, Olg is asking at what time um, should the hatches be closed or closed but not latched? 
23.45 is a completion of their schedule. Of, uh, so they're, they're giving him instructions. Uh, they're giving him instructions on Space Ground 2 right now. Okay, at 45 minutes. Okay, I got it. To hear me, right? To see me. Yes. We are ready. Okay, very good. So, at the scheduled time, we'll start talking. We can hear you. Here and see you very well. We can see your address officially. Very good. We'll be closing the hatches and then we'll come back at the scheduled time. Very good copy. Oleg Novitsky on the right, of course, the Soyuz commander for tonight's undocking and Soyuz landing. Handshakes and hugs, final farewells uh, before Parasild and Chepenko make their way into their return craft. Anton Shkaplerov in the foreground. He uh, rode uphill with uh, Parasild and Shapenko on October 5th. Novitsky now inside, and as we mentioned, Novitsky will help uh, Parasild and Shapenko suit up in their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits. He will suit up after them. The actual closing of the hatch for the final time will take place at about 4.45 p.m. Central Time this afternoon. Klim Shapenko, the uh, producer-director for this uh, movie-making mission aboard the International Space Station on behalf of Roscosmos and Moscow-based media entities, 
will be in the left seat of the uh, descent module, the center section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft. He will serve as board engineer number one for undocking through landing. Parasild will be in the right seat as board engineer number two. And uh, there we are, the Soyuz hatch closed. And the station hatch closed. 3.41 p.m. Central Time. The crew uh, deciding uh, to close the hatches a bit earlier so that they uh, have ample time uh, to get suited up. What... Uh, Guys, uh, we got the video. You can turn off the camera. And what we're uh, what we're being told is is that uh, this hatch closure uh, is all part of the uh, the procedures uh, for f some of the scenes for the movie that is that was being shot on board the International Space Station. The actual final closing of the hatch will take place as. We indicated earlier about an hour from now. And that will uh, seal the hatch and uh, initiate leak checks at the uh, docking interface between the Soyuz and Naoka. But uh, for all intents and purposes, the hatch is closed at 3.41 p.m. Central Time, 4.41 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, everybody says hello to you. Hello. And with that, uh, the camera in the... Uh, Naoka vestibule has been turned off with the crews having said farewell uh, to one another and the three crew members on board uh, the Soyuz vehicle. How do you read me? Once uh, the leak checks are completed at the docking interface, uh, the Soyuz uh, will push off on docking from the Naoka module at uh, 8.14 p.m. Central Time this evening. It will back away to a safe distance away from uh, the International Space Station for the start of the deorbit burn, the engine firing that will last four minutes and 39 seconds, that deorbit burn to be initiated at 10.41 p.m. Central Time this evening. That uh, engine firing will slow the Soyuz down, allowing it to slip out of orbit, and uh, will enable it to enter the Earth's atmosphere for the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz at 11.10 p.m. Central Time this evening. Only that center section, the descent module, in which the crew will be strapped into their respective seats will survive the heat of re-entry. Okay. They'll uh, move into a plasma regime in which temperatures will build up to about 2,500 degrees. The Soyuz setting its sights on the landing site for the command to open up the parachutes that will begin uh, their final descent uh, towards uh, the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan. Landing is scheduled at 11.36 p.m. Central Time, 12.36 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.36 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Sunday morning. Right before touchdown, uh, braking rockets on the Soyuz will fire uh, to cushion uh, the final uh, impact at the landing site, and the Soyuz will be home. Once uh, the Soyuz is down, uh, the search and recovery forces of Ros Aviatsa will have an opportunity to um, 